Welcome into K-State Online. I'm Mason Voth, joined by Derek Young as the Wildcats come away with a 42-13 victory today over the Troy Trojans. T-Roy walking out of Bill Snyder Family Stadium very sad, wearing his underwear under his skirt that I, I saw. And he, he kind of explained to me that he did have it. He showed it off, so it's not like breaking news there. But I thought it was weird that a mascot would wear boxer briefs over his mascot legs under his skirt. A very weird deal. Anyways, the game... K-State comes away with a big win. The group of five curse broken. Didn't jinx it last week to everybody that pointed that out. But it looked a little slow and sluggish at first for K-State, and that really starts with the offense because there were some questions about Will Howard, especially on the ball that he threw the interception on. And then the offensive line had some struggles today when it came time to move some space for the running backs to break off and get going. And Treshawn Ward still had a good day numbers-wise, but it just looked kind of clunky. Yeah, two things that kind of stick out to me is remember KSU underscore fan throughout the week said, I expect this game to feel a little bit more like the Nevada game than the Tulane game. I thought that was spot on, although they probably were even more convincing today than in 2021 against Nevada. And then another thing is like, and I don't, it's going to sound bad, right? But it was like the most underwhelming 42 to 13 win that I can ever remember. Like they won by more than four touchdowns and it just never felt great. You had Will Howard throwing the interception uh, you know, downfield into double coverage, a ball there, maybe triple coverage, just a ball that he should not have tossed. So th there's one. Um, DJ Giddens had a fumble that wasn't a fumble, but obviously you want to clean that up, uh, even though that's probably nothing to that. The offensive line, again, sputtered at times. Uh, it seems like the only way for them to have success right now, any semblance of success, is to move Cooper Beebe out to right tackle. You know what the problem is when you move Cooper Beebe out to right tackle? You can't run the ball as well. So... The offense has some things to work on going into the Missouri game, and it, it has felt clunky. But when you can feel underwhelmed with your own performance and still win by 29 points over a team, it's probably going to win at least seven or eight football games. Uh, maybe that tells you where we're at in terms of what our expectations are for Kansas State, what their expectations are for themselves, and maybe just how good they are. Because we're really – I mean, we we had some criticisms last week when they went 45 to nothing over SEMA, which is a good FCS club. So uh, the fact that we're mincing, you know, or, you know, split hairs over some of these things is probably a good thing because the alternative is losing to Tulane or losing to Arkansas State or Navy. And they took care of business even when they didn't have their best. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's probably the significant thing here is that it didn't feel great walking out with you know, the 42 to 13. And Chris Kleiman kind of said it, you know, at halftime, it was one of those deals where they had some stuff that they had to address and fix. And they did, and it helped that they – Coming back out there, because they could have been defeated 14-10, to 10, looking like that's going to be the halftime score. But Chris Kleiman was aggressive with his timeout usage, something that in the past maybe he wouldn't have been. And the receivers picked up Will Howard, who was also picking himself up, and they got that big score, and they made things happen. And you're right, too. I mean, our expectations are very high for this team. So that's why some of this stuff – is you know probably sounding nitpicky at times especially when the results still look good but you got to remember last year the results look good through two games for k-state they just blew out mizzou and then they had the loss to tulane and it kind of you know they had to revamp some things and get going i don't think it's that same type of deal this year obviously uh, but mizzou is going to be a different test for them and they'll have to be ready for it defensively though it seems like k-state is prepared for just about anybody we, we saw the, the DBs get tested a little bit more today, but before we talk about them, we got to go back to all the guys up front because the defensive line has been spectacular through two games. They, they loaded up on sacks today, and then the linebackers were making plays as well. Yeah, when it comes to the offense, I'm not terrified by any means, just that they can definitely be sharper. And you have to wonder, think, you know, you'll, maybe you're a better team when you get John Pastore and Christian Duffy back. Defensively, I mean, they're going to be – in the mix, perhaps, at least right now, through two games. It's early. Maybe the best defense in the Big 12. That's how good they have been. Uh, you, you get uh, some turnovers today that you're forced when you haven't really done that yet. So they're doing this without forcing turnovers. They, they had one bad drive when they when the, the touchdown, they made it 14 to 10, and they had one rushing explosive that they allowed in the second half. And, it's, and it's outside of that, it was a really good game from that side of the ball. Second in a row, I mean, they're a play here or a play there from another shutout. I mean, it's, it's that simple. Jacob Parrish, uh, you lose a lot with Julius Brent. You lose a lot with that good boy, though. Uh, he's not missing a beat so far. And he competes at the ball even more than those two did. And that's saying something. So uh, Will Lee has got a lot of size to him. Marquis Siegel got his feet wet today, and that's great going into the Missouri game. 
a little, you know, the, we thought the linebackers may be the best unit. I'm not saying they're underwhelmed. I almost did. I wouldn't say they're, they've underwhelmed. They, you have to be really good to play the, 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 the caliber of defense that Kansas State's played each of the last two games, especially the way Austin Moore is playing and stuff like that. But even they could play a little bit better football. So that's, I mean, sky's the limit probably for this defense. But they really got after the quarterback in a regular clip today and, and could have been even a little bit better because they were ticked late a couple of times. But that's that's a lot of pressure you're getting after the quarterback with just three or four. And they're able to do that with consistency just because you got guys like Khalid Duke. Brendan Mott was a defensive end of the week last week. I bet he's close to that this week too because he might have won every snap again. He's been that good. Toby Osinsami. Man, when they put him today on the same side of the line of scrimmage as Khalid Duke, uh, Troy had no answer for that. Yeah, and maybe it, it took a little bit, it seemed like, for the, the pressure to get there today. But when it did, it just was relentless. And Khalid Duke, obviously, a big day. We got to see him reel in some more fish. So that was uh, probably fun for him as well. The celebrations continued. We saw Hayden Gillum and Will Howard with uh, the, the shotgunning approach. That, that is a great one as well. Now Maybe we do that at some point. Well, maybe we do. I, yeah. We'll see how next week goes. If, if big win. We, we might have to bust it out there. Uh, <laughs> Thinking about everything else that took place today, you mentioned Marquis Siegel getting in there, and I mean he immediately made his presence felt. Very similar to Josh Hayes last year, missed game one, came in, and you instantly knew, okay, this guy is a legit player for the Cats. You know what? I forgot Josh Hayes missed game one last year. So, man, they, they, he just wants to be a clone yep. to Josh Hayes as much as possible that he got himself suspended. So <laughs> um, that, that takes real dedication and effort. I know he made a splash play on that first drive, just blew up a pass play into the flats, and – you know, that's what you kind of got to do at that at that particular safety position. I thought he disappeared a little bit. Um, maybe he just wasn't tested or challenged. He just didn't pop up much. But that's definitely a guy you feel really good about going forward as well. And, yeah, like, I'll be honest, no concern for this defense right now. None. Yeah, I mean, they're really good. Uh, my attention was taken away for a second. I just saw two children crawl out of the, like, ice cooler over there. That was that was something. All right, we'll close things out. Special teams. Got to talk about your boy Chris Tennant. Perfect on balls that had to go through the uprights today. I will point out, though, not to ma- not to be mean to Chris Tennant, but mainly just to throw a little bit back at you, he did have a very wide swath of land that he needed to try to land the ball inside of, and he did miss that one on one kickoff today out of bounds. But very good again, and, and good to see that he was able to go out there and continue to execute and just play things clean. They haven't been the most challenging kicks for him yet in the most challenging circumstances, but honestly, that doesn't really matter. You just want to see him putting together consistently good performances. Those consistently good performances are going to give him a bunch of confidence, and that confidence will you know, will be huge moving forward. And we saw what happened with Will Howard last year when your confidence is just like a bowling ball, man. And you just you get more and more and more. You get better and better and better. I think that's what we'll see from Chris Tennant in terms of the kickoff. Yes, he, he can take it. You know what? That's It's also a half yard from being a perfect kickoff, too. So I'm just throwing that out there. No field goals today. I did say he would remain perfect, and he did. Yeah, well, and also with this K-State defense, it's not a huge deal if you give a couple extra yards there. And also, I mean, it's still 10 yards and and moving them up, but it doesn't feel like as big of a deal now when the touchback gets them at the 25 and then the 35. They can make up for it. One final thing I think we probably need to circle back on on this is the the Will Howard throw because that got people in a tizzy when it happened. And it it makes sense why, because – there is a concern. Will Howard has two years of not very good decision making, and it has seemed like through the first two games, if something is not there immediately for him to hit, he'll try and be patient. But if he needs to get rid of the ball, instead of just throwing it away or finding somebody shallow, he is looking to chuck it downfield and trusting his receivers and himself, which isn't always a bad thing, but it did lead to that pick today. It led to some other balls that you go, ooh, that's, that's a little dicey. What do you make of Will Howard and, and how things are going for him right now? He's getting a little bit greedy. Uh, I think Chris Kleiman used that exact word, getting a little bit greedy. That was the probably the third time I want to say they've thrown into coverage this year. So in a way, I know, uh, yeah, I don't know if I put this on the board or, or where I put it. In a way, I'm glad that he was punished for that decision because that can be a pretty big deterrent and a good learning, uh, good, something good to learn from moving forward. So not something that I anticipate lingering. And the fact that he did get punished with the pick this time, because Simo got away with it, and I think he admitted that during his uh, yep. uh, time with the media after the game, uh, the fact that he wasn't able to get away with it is probably a good thing. 
Yep. Well, it, he obviously erased many doubts with the way he played after that. Obviously, the drive that made it 21 to 10 in the second half. So K State comes away 42 to 13. The final score. Now the 2-0 Wildcats await their return trip to Columbia after thrashing Missouri here a year ago. Obviously, Missouri will be well motivated. The Tigers probably a little bit better than last year's team. Also not supposed to be downpour weather delays next week in Columbia, so that probably changes the dynamic a little bit. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing how the Wildcats look then. Probably move up a little bit in the rankings. We'll have to see what happens in front of them. But the number 15 team doing what the number 15 team in the country should do, did not play with their food, took down Troy today. And uh, that will do it from Bill Snyder Family Stadium. For Derek Young, I'm Mason Voth. We'll be back on K-State Online tomorrow for the – Post game pod, Drew Galloway, KSU underscore fan, will join me as we'll recap everything that took place behind us today and also take a look around the rest of the Big 12.